So anytime I start thinking like I've done a few things or um, maybe I'm getting busy, I, I, I think about your life, Eddie, and uh, man, you got, a, you got a hell of a life going, man, I, and I, so many cool things. Uh, we're going to try and get into a few of them here, but um, I want to start with one that's, uh, that I just learned about. I want to start with the Pacific Ocean. Holy mackerel. <laughs> Yeah. Going back to, you, hey, Stevie, you're going back to 1960. You weren't even born yet. <laughs> well, now let's, let's tell let's, people let's, what, what, what is what, the Pacific, is Pacific Ocean? Ocean? It's this big body of water that's off the, <laughs> <laughs> the western part of the United States of America. No, what it was is this. I had a rock and roll band, and I started uh, in 1960, started singing rock and roll. I was a, a ball player. I used to play baseball, and then I, I, I got – fell in love with rock and roll with uh little richard and uh and all of the uh robert johnson and when you would do it we we the singer or we yeah yeah i was a, a singer but i was the worst singer in the band and i was the lead singer classic 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 you know it, it happens was, with bands sometimes doesn't it <laughs> yeah i mean so, basically it was it was a situation where uh it was a rock and roll band, and we played. We played a lot. We, we really played a lot, and it taught me a lot about uh, discipline, determination, perseverance, and patience. It were the key ingredients that uh, I've been able to understand my life through because I learned it when I was five years old. Going into all, I played baseball every day, seven days a week. So I had learned to play the game, and I learned that uh, when I got into music, I said, "Shoot, if I do what I did in baseball, I could do this. I could." You know, so that 10,000 hour thing got into play and I started mm -hmm. to do, you know, just started to do it every day, seven days a week. And I did it for until, uh, you know, 1973, 74. And, and I got to really, I recorded albums and we played on the census strip. We were playing at the Gazaris. I played there for four years. Seven wow. nights. Ago. Wow. Yeah. So I stayed there for four years thinking, you know, four years at, at one nightclub playing every single night. Never had a break. No Christmas. No New Year's. No every. We worked every night. But it, wow. you didn't want to do anything else. 1964 through 1968. And those were the high, heights of, of uh, the Sunset Strip. You know, singing wow. every night. You know, playing uh, three shows a, a day, a night. But anyway, so rock and roll, Pacific Ocean, drove me as my vehicle from baseball right into performance. And uh, I used to perform when I was on the ball field. So anyway, so I, I want to talk to you about, um, uh, so you started the, the uh, Latin American uh, International uh, Film Festival, right? right? Yeah. We, we, we yeah. were talking about that a few years ago. Yeah. And, um, and then that kind of turned into the education thing, right? It kind of... The youth One kind of led to the other? Yeah. The, the, the festival, which started in 1998, uh, then became um, a component of that. We would bring kids from all over Los Angeles that were along the metro line. The metro people let the kids come on free so they could come to Hollywood. Oh, nice. and, they would, and they would get off right there at the, uh, at the Grauman's Chinese Theater. And that's where our, 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 we were at the uh, Egyptian and the Grauman's Chinese and we'd use the El Capitan, those three uh, theater screens. So they would come to that area right there, Hollywood and Highlands, and they would they would use the Metro and then they'd get off and they'd come come in and work with us and watch the movies. And the and the kid the schools loved it because we would bring them in and we would show them films from uh, Latin America and all over the Iberoamerica, which is you know, Caribbean, uh, Spain, Portugal, uh, right. uh, Central America, South America. United States, of course, and uh, the, we would show the movies, and but they would be in Spanish, with English subtitles, okay, and we would show them. You know, there was grammar school, there were junior high, high schools, and colleges. So each one of those groups would have their own movie that they would watch, and of course, the grammar school kids and the, and the junior high kids, the teachers loved us because they said we can't get them to sit down and read for two hours. It's mm -hmm. really it's really hard to get them to do that. And here they come in here, they sit here for two hours, they're watching a movie and they got to read. If they don't speak Spanish, they got to read the subtitles. Right. So that became a real inspirational thing for the schools. And so more and more schools started to come. And so we started a writing program, story program, writing a story and then work on it before the festival. 
and then we would read them at the at the film festival in uh, th at that time it was in uh, September October and so they would come from when the school started and the teachers would, they were going to bring their kids would have the kids write stories and then we would read them at the festival so they were writing and they were telling stories and so from that we got into the school systems in 2003 and we started to bring uh, uh, the understanding of the audiovisual event of filmmaking to grammar school kids, fourth graders. And Stevie, mm -hmm. nothing has been the same since. 2003 to 2008, it was a, it was a process we were trying to learn how to do it. We needed to, to work on the um, curriculum and, and the way to teach it and all that. And then 2008 to 2010, it got to be a little stronger. So seven years, we had, were in five schools. And then all of a sudden, man, 2011, it broke. Boom. And then in 2014, I shut down the festival and, and just carried the, 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 uh, the student film, the youth cinema project, and, and brought in uh, uh, filmmakers. I started to bring in uh, filmmakers to help the kids. So we would bring into the classroom two professional filmmakers, graduates from the American Film Institute or Chapman or UCLA or SC or, uh, you know, from New York, you know, and all over the country, wherever those students, because they would come here, kids are, kids are here trying to make their life inside of the art form of filmmaking, and they're young and they're trying to, to get ahead. So we would use them, pay them really good money. We pay them real good money to come and teach the kids. And so we put two filmmakers into the classroom. We had worked the curriculum for about eight years, nine years, and really got it solid. Right now we're in um, 16 school districts with over 1,400 kids uh, per wow. semester, per semester. Right. And it's, it's not an after school special. This uh -huh. is all year. Uh -huh. And they learn how to, they learn about story. They learn how to write. They learn how to, how to uh, do pre-production, post-production, uh, and post-production. They learn marketing, they learn distribution, they learn uh, how to set up their LLCs. We would come in and then say, okay, now stand up everybody, and then they rearrange the, the, the desks into groups, and then they would teach them you know, the basic fundamentals of story, and then the, in groups of six, because there's usually 30 kids per class, uh, they would start to learn how to tell their story. It's like you're writing your song. Okay. You know, you start off with a mm -hmm. chord, two chords, and you start out singing, you know, she loves you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> she loves you. Yeah. Oh, we, don't, we, we don't have to pay for that. <laughs> I know we don't. That's okay. That's an old Mexican favorite. <laughs> I get, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but any, so, any, so they, they, were, they, were they shooting on? Were they shooting it on? on shooting stuff on their oh, phones? They, they go, oh, no, 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 no. We bring in. We brought in equipment. We have real lights. They learn about uh, how to set up their gaffing. They learn how to gaff. They learn how to set up makeup. They do their 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 casting. They do location scouting. They do wow. all all pre <laughs> They learn all of that. Wow! They learn wow. everything. Each group and each group is making their movies. And what we do, it starts off again, the first three months is about writing. But we only use the first about six, about for the first two months, all they, they have to write longhand, not on a computer, mm. longhand, all right? Mm. And then they got to read it. They read the, it's a synopsis, a story. You got to read your story to them. And it's usually half a page, two thirds of a page, you know? And they, and they all stand up and each one of the six kids in the group reads a story. From that reading, and they read it to the entire class, and then they go back to their groups. From that, the six kids, and this is the key to the whole structure that really put it to a very high level. They learned communication, collaboration, critical thinking, and creativity. Right from the get-go, they were collaborating with one another, and, and stuff that you can't learn when you're studying social studies, math, you know, English, you don't learn collaboration. You don't learn communication. Yeah. You do, you use it, but you don't use it with the whole group. 
So they learned how to do that. And, and then they learned how to tell a story. So each one of them had to tell a story. That we went from, we bring in the two people and they teach them how to write the story. From writing their story, they end up speaking it. Then they go back to the, their, their groups and they decide which story they want to do as their script. So they have to collaborate amongst the six and talk about which story they think would, that the, everybody appreciates and wants to do. And then they all become, they all start to write that story. So out of the six, they got to collaborate, communicate with one another and pick one of the, of the six. And then they, they end up moving forward with that story and make it into a, 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 a five page script it ends, ends up being about three minutes worth of movie making and they write the script and all of this is being done with two mentors helping them. They got the teacher there too. What, what's great though, Eddie, and, and what, what, what I loved about this when you told me about it a couple of years ago, you know, the same thing we're doing, which is integrating the arts into the education process. It changes the process itself. I mean, of course, we're, we're all, we're, you know, we're all interested in, in the kids, uh, learning the arts, you know, which is its own reward for the kids. And of course we want the arts to be, to be continued anyway, but, but uh, it's, it's beyond that, you know, because the arts plays on a different part of the brain, you know, and you don't have the pressure of that precision that has to do with the sciences or the, or math, you know, it has to do with imagination and, 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 and instinct you know, and emotion. And, and the things you're talking about, collaboration and, you know, communicating in the real world, you know, with real people. We're always trying to tell people, we got, you got, you know, we tell the teachers, we got to start teaching in the present tense, okay? This generation wants, to, wants something they can use now, you know? They, they, they don't, don't tell them, learn this now, and someday you'll use it. That ain't going to work for this generation. Give them something they can use right now. You know, and, and, and that's exactly what you're doing, you know, which is it's so fantastic, you know. Yeah, all, all these skills of uh, compromise and collaboration and, you know, working together, giving a little, taking a little, pushing forth your idea, if you believe in it, that's all stuff you have to use. I don't care what you do for a living, right. you know, that's all the time. If you're working in a factory, you got to do that just to figure out where you're going to sit. That's it. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> we're doing this, Drew and, and Stevie. When we're doing this, we are not trying to make filmmakers. Okay. What we're trying to make is lifelong learners. Mm. Yeah. I, I, the teachers I gotta, say, man, when you, guys are, when you guys are done with them, you guys, they, they're English. They're, they, they like studying more. They like, uh, 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 they listen better. They, I guarantee they, they, you. I guarantee you right now, you're, you've got to be affecting the dropout rate. You gotta be, right? We went one gotta school be. system. In one school system, Stevie, in one school system in, in Santa Ana, their, their junior and high school had lost 400 kids. Okay, drop out, uh, going off to parochial schools, private schools, uh, charter schools in the Santa Ana public school system. We implemented our program in about 19, uh, 2011, 2012. We in and put it in. And by 2014, 600 kids returned. Mm. So <laughs> they started to there come back because they couldn't find this program anywhere else. They had, uh. had to be inside of that school system. We were into the grammar schools, junior highs, and high schools. And now that chain has been picked up by Chapman University. And Chapman is giving scholarships to the students that go through this program. Wow. Full ride scholarships. Chapman's and and like they're not the best film school in Southern California right now. Yeah, but guess what? You know what they said to them? They said, you don't have to come in there. Your students don't have to come in here and become filmmakers. They can do anything they want. We're just, we want the way, the kind of students that they are, we want those students here. Wow. And so they, 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 nice, we did nice. it. We, we had crossed into that place where we, we had touched and affected the children so much. And yeah, I mean, some of them have become, you know, uh, first ADs, they have become directors, they have, they are going into producing, because we've been doing this now long enough so that we're watching our, pro the kids go off into college and then graduating from college now too. So we're, we're seeing whether, tr we're tracking them. We have Stanford University that did an assessment, 
it's one of the best uh, schools for assessment in the world. They, they, their PhD program is just like exquisite, Stanford universities. So they came and they, they use their students that are in their doctoral program to come in and do the assessments for our program because they wanted, they had heard about it. So they came in and they started to work with us. And, and they, they wrote things that I, and they, they said to me, and, and I, it's in the paperwork, they go, uh, you know, you guys don't even understand what you guys are doing. You have no idea what effect you are having on these students. How did you, I, how did you get this idea in the first place? Where did this come from? This came from, again, this came from uh, 1998 when we started showing the screening, the films at the Latino International Film Festival. By the way, the Latino International Film Festival came back. We shut it down for, for four mm. years and then it came back and it's been going now. This is the third year since we came back now since we've oh, been there. Cool. Um, and this year we were virtual and we were the first uh, international film festival to go on, on virtual when, when COVID hit. So the COVID hit and then we, we ended up going right away. We said we got, and our, our, all of our teachers, all of the mentors, our programs quickly got transformed into virtual uh, school uh, processes and mm -hmm. and same thing one with our our, our whole our whole uh, 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 film festival became virtual and free so they could see it anywhere in the world and that really are it multiplied the amount of people that were actually uh, visiting fantastic yeah it was really good yeah so well, anyway well I guess we better we better wrap it up but thank you so much Eddie I know how busy you are man I really what a really pleasure, appreciate man. you doing this for us, you know, and I want to, I want to tell everybody about what you've been doing because it's so inspiring and, and, um, and, st and still unique as far as I know, you know, I think you're, you're still, you know, the main one, you know, this, this whole thing was created by you out there and, 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 uh, and I hope it spreads, man. I want to, we, we, we got to make this thing spread around because what? one of our, one of our big things is also increasing the graduation rate. You know, what people don't realize is close to 50% of the kids in the poor neighborhoods are dropping out of high school, close to 50%. Yeah. And almost 50% of them end up in the criminal justice system sooner or later, you know. And that's just, those percentages are not tolerable, you know, that we should not be tolerating that. And uh, so what you're doing and, and what we're doing, I think uh, is really uh, important. And uh, and I just love, I love your whole thing, man. I love it. So, so thank you. I love you yours too. Me. Thank you, man. Thank you. You, you've done extraordinary work, Stephen. A really, really committed, you know, you committed yourself to the community, which is really, it's fantastic. You know, people say, why did you do that? And I said, well, basically, I got more out of it than they did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I do. Yeah. You know, the feeling that I get from helping others, and it's just like, whew, it's a tremendous sense of self-respect and self-esteem and self-worth. And it's just like unbelievable. The more you give, the more you receive. The more you help, the more people help you. And it just is contagious. And and that's what's happened. The community has turned out. And here we are. I'm 74. And I can honestly tell I'm working now more than I worked when I was in my 30s. Congratulations again, Eddie. And keep, keep doing what you do, baby. And we'll be, we'll, be, uh, we'll be checking it out. Hey, you keep working what you're doing, man. I love you guys. Thank you, Drew. Thank you a thousand love times. Love you over, too, man. man. Love you too. Yeah. God bless Thank you, buddy. Take care. All right. Thank you.